Yes, ma'am. Yeah, if you could just go back to the part where you were talking about the chemicals a little bit more. Sure. Um, if you could cover a little bit more about that. Well, the easiest overview I can give you is, again, um, three primary reasons why we use chemicals. It's very important that we protect that well. I don't mean why. I mean what specific chemicals and what do we know about those chemicals in detail? The, well, it is important because you have to understand why we use the chemicals because if there wasn't a purpose, we wouldn't be using those. And so many people think that we're whipping us. Just it's really not about the purpose. We, I think we have a good grasp, but if they didn't have a purpose for your process, that they If it didn't have a purpose, we wouldn't use them. Exactly. So we don't need to really discuss that so much. We need to discuss maybe the other side of things. Uh, you have to understand the purpose because when people say that you're putting something in there to kill bacteria, they don't understand it. It's very important so that you understand why we're putting things in there to kill bacteria. It's important when I hear this term slick water, for example, yes. it's important for people to understand that what we're really doing is protecting the well door. Uh, here in Ohio, uh, the very specific chemicals, it is required by state law that those chemicals be disclosed. Okay? It used to be that in your completion report, in your completion report, you included the depth, uh, where we call it TD, total depth, and, and other different information we had to put on the completion report. Today, everything must be disclosed. And that is available for public scrutiny. In what detail? The detail, you can either, um, what they have to do is show the different chemicals, the exact amount. Remember, depending on the hydraulic fracturing job, it's going to vary from well to well. It's also going to vary a little bit depending on the geology. So I would encourage you to go to OBNR's website. I would also encourage you to go to Frac Focus because I'll have the first state to fully implement that. But we've always been a full disclosure. MSDS sheets. Don't shake your head. MSDS sheets. It is. Right. MSDS sheets. It's a material safety and data sheet. And Charlie, I know you can speak to this as well. You go into any business's company. Technically, if you walk down your grocery aisle with all the different chemicals, you should see MSDS sheets all the way down. Okay? You have to, we've always provided those MSDS sheets because you needed to in the event that maybe there was an employee there that had a chemical burn so that they knew what was spilled on that particular employee. So Ohio is a full disclosure state and we always have been. Actually what happened was in that Senate Bill 315, first there was a gag rule so that if a physician saw a patient who had been exposed to those chemicals, that is not true. Not that is not know. true. It is true. It is even not now, true. Even now, after the Ma'am, that is not true. It is it's true. not true. The Ohio State Medical Association had to go down to Columbus and have them put an addendum in to say that physicians could get that information. Ma'am, in, in the MSDS sheet, let me tell you, but in the MSDS sheet, it was the same information sorry, that the physicians you needed. Or not, because at this point in time, that information doesn't have to be made available until 50 days after the well completion. So my question is this, okay? And, and, and also with respect to your position in this, um, I'd like to know what emergencies were prepared for when the chemicals are not gonna be made available until 60 days after well completion. So what are we prepared for? What do you know? What staff knows what? Is it the emergency department staff? Is it the crew on the squad? Is it the fire department coming to the scene? Who knows what? And how can you be prepared for something when you don't even know what you're going to encounter when you get there? Okay, first of all, we've been doing this for a long time. Uh-huh. Long time. Uh -huh. What you have not heard about in Ohio, and even as it relates to the workers, they would be the first one. You, you haven't heard about workers being hurt out there, being exposed. You haven't heard that? <laughs> it, is, it is relevant because you're saying all of a sudden now, it's important to understand that we have not had problems, but we've advanced. They have, they are required by state law to turn in their completion report 60 days afterwards. Here's what I recommend to all landowners, okay? And in some cases, state law requires it. You are welcome test your water at any time. For what? Wait a second. Just wait, bear, wait a minute. Hang on. 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 Hang
It can be bought from a municipality. So it can be bought from a number of different sources. So we're looking across this summer. It's been drought everywhere. How much water does it take for one well? Which, during which process? All of them. Just tell them. When we're drilling, not very much. Those, those fresh water pits that we're making mud, a couple hundred thousand gallons. Millions. Millions of gallons. Millions. Um, we were talking about hydraulic fractures. She asked me about drilling. They're two different waters. Remember, I tried to explain the difference between the waters. So we're going to buy it from the landowner. I think what I said um, during hydraulic fracturing or well stimulation, okay, many of your water wells are also stimulated. We're going to use anywhere from two to five million gallons. And to put that into perspective, it's about, but I get this, I mean, it's about what the average golf course uses in about five days. However, I do know that most of that goes back down and can be reused. So I'm, I'm just still trying